Hello everyone, I'm back with a different type of video. Mainly, this is going to be solar centered around clearing up the main misconceptions that I've seen about the Project Liverse called High School DXD. Now, this is going to be a separate video, mainly due to like it being a more of a rebuttal video instead of just a normal power scaling video. And of course, due to the amount of terrible debunks that I've seen to this verse, I think it would make sense for me to actually dive in and just give a great explanation to why all of them are just bad. And also, just so you know, the timestamps will be in this video, so you won't have to worry about just re-watching the video time and time again to find these rebounds. So, let's just get right into the video. Rebound number one, mythology. As you know, a majority of DXC scaling is predicated from something called mythology, which is a traditional story belonging to a certain religion. If you want to go check out my Issa and Ovis video where I explain how strong some of these gods are, you should. But basically, the problem people have for this type of scaling is not the characters themselves, but rather is if they're the same ones from mythology, specifically if the feats and statements from there are in this verse. Now, these are more of the skeptic type of people because they're mostly be asking, oh, how do we know this feat is in this verse, right? They're doubtful. The problem with this is that most of the time for these DXD debunkers, they actually have no basis for why they think, right, these feats couldn't be in the verse, which is bad on their end, because then you can just say they have no reason to be doubtful, thus dismissing it. But what makes it worse, worse, right, is the fact that these gods in DXD are actually forbidden to be the gods from mythology, thus strengthening your, of course, claims. Now, since you have this consistency here, right, and they're just still just asking for more proof, you still have no obligation to give if, right, if these feats are in the verse, if they can't even get past the first part of your evidence, which is the gods being the same ones from mythology. You see what I'm trying to say here, right? Moving further, you can also say all these feats would be implied off of these gods being the same ones from mythology, right? Which And something that's implied or implication is a conclusion drawn from something that's not explicitly stated. So this conclusion that these feats are in the verse, even though they're not specific, is off of reasonable evidence, that being the characters in uh, DXD or these mythological gods are the actually the forbidden to be the same ones from mythology. So that's just a simple explanation for it. So let's just move on. Debunk number two, coexisting religions. This is a debunk where the person would ask or say how these mythologies and religions can't exist together since it's uh, contradictory, since these religions are not supposed to interact with each other. Well, to simply refutate this, we have to look into religious systems, the system we're specifically looking into is syncretism. This is when something blends two or more religious belief systems into a new system, which includes traditional beliefs as well, so stuff like Journey to the West, in the Bible, etc. So now what we would call DXD is a massive syncretism, based on a system which is blending multiple of these religions into its own self, right? However, that's how you prove these religions can't exist within a verse, but there's something else. The problem, the other problem is not them just being within the verse, it's also the overlapping. And what I mean by this, let's say we have chaos from Greek mythology. Let's say he created the universe. However, this other god created this universe. So how can this god create this universe if this other god in this lore is supposed to do this, thus overlapping? Well, the other simple reputation is the fact that in DXD, right, their cosmological places are within the verse. Meaning that whatever they mean by create universe, they have their own like places where they created it, right? They're all separate from each other. Meaning that uh, there's no overlapping, right? So for instance, like the underworld where they have to transport to actually get there. Same thing for like heaven stuff like right that, right? They're not binding together. And some of these cosmological places in DXD include like Mount Meru, Olympus, Greece, Asgard, of course, Underworld. And it's funny how I mention this because they literally do <laughs> talk about stuff like this when Loki was evading all these different mythologies. But since this is done, let's move on to the next one. Debunk number three, continuity and rankings. Now, I've seen people bring this up multiple times. Essentially, they'll say, how are these characters, how are these mythological characters doing this if this doesn't happen in their story? Basically, contradicting themselves. The problem with this is that the way the author Ishibumi wrote DXD is that he put the stories, right, in the verse, but he applied a continuation towards them. 
meaning events that don't happen in their story is most likely to happen after the events with it. For instance, we have Sung Wukong. He works for Indra, but that doesn't happen in Drain to the West. But in fact, it happens afterwards. Same thing can be said to the rankings of the top 10 strongest people. These rankings are given in continuations of them. And easily, just like instances such as like the great war between the three fractions, like fallen angels, devils, and angels. This doesn't happen in the Bible, but it happens after the Bible's creation. So now that we got it out of the way, let's move on to the next debunk. Debunk number four, planetary debunks. This is a common debunk I tend to see for characters like Grey Red, Issei, and Trihexica. And basically, this is a debunk predicated from multiple scans of them saying, oh, he can destroy a planet, so therefore he must be planetary, right? Now, there's two issues with this. One, it being an outlier, and two, you just scale him off of the planet, right? I'll explain. A outlier is an inconsistency with a character's display level of power in some situation or event. For example, it's like saying Kirby literally destroyed multiple stars and solar systems, and then he just randomly struggles to destroy a planet. That planet part would just be a outlier. It's an inconsistency with consistent greater feats. Now, we have them with scaling off of the planet. So basically, the planet in DXD isn't actually a normal planet. It contains multiple outerversal constructs or high outerversal constructs on them, which I used one of them in my ESA scaling video, which was the Kyoto, which holds the principle of yin and yang, which is essentially all duality. There's even Mount Muru, which is a metaphysical cosmology beyond the physicality of dimensionality, along with Honi the Jain, the Buddhist, the Hindu cosmology within it. So you can use those planetary statements to say that he can destroy the planet, sure, but you'll also be destroying these outer versal to high outer versal constructs on it itself. I don't know why people would tend to use this debunk. I think it's the most, I think it might be the worst debunk that someone can actually propose for this verse. But enough ranting, let's go on to the, probably the last debunk. Final debunk five, beyond omnipotent gods. So this stems from characters in DXD being able to kill gods who are supposed to be omnipotent, thus contradicting those omnipotent gods lore. However, the rebuttal to this is pretty simple. It's basically their lack of understanding on how omnipotence works in fiction and what transtheism is. So let me explain. So. First, the way Omnipotence works in fiction is that these characters are all powerful, but only within their respectable verses. So in DXD, let's say for example, we have Toa who's omnipotent in Marvel and you have Presence who's omnipotent in DC. Toa beats up the Presence. However, would that contradict the Presence being omnipotent in DC? No, it's just that a character from a different verse is stronger, right, than the other. But it's only, they're still omnipotent in their own like religion, just like how God is stated to be omnipotent within Christianity. So that doesn't really apply. Now, the way to solidify this is through transtheism, which is a system or thought or religious philosophy that is neither theistic or atheistic, but is beyond them. Which, in theistic, it's limited sense that gods exist, but are irrelevant as they are translated by Sigma Moksha, which is... A system that is non-theistic, but in which the gods are not the highest spiritual instances, which DXC clearly abides by, due to them being able to kill these gods that are supposed to be the strongest within their own religion. So, still, they're omnipotent within the religion, it's just that they are transcendent by this system. We have seen similar instances in Buddhism as well. So now we finally got those to mix out of the way, we can now go to these conclusions. Alright, so this will conclude for today's video. I hope this clears up some confusion and misconceptions that you had on DXD. And to the DXD debunkers who are thinking of ways to try to debunk this verse, be more creative next time because these suck so bad. Alright, so I'll just see y'all in the next video. Bye.